Hello and welcome to another part of the Arshine XP interior design webinar series. Today we are going to look at bathroom design and we are going to look at how to create tiling and tiling patterns. My name is Zoltan Toth, your host today. I'm working at uh, Arshine XP. I'm the partner manager and I'm also a um, personal CAD and uh, modeling enthusiast. So I love creating things. So I'm not only going to show you how to create this, but I'm also going to tell you a bit about the tricks and the shortcuts you can employ to sort of speed up your workflow because modeling is always about speed. As always, I'm encouraging you to ask your questions on the right hand side next to the chat bar or if you are watching from a mobile device, then just below the, uh, the show that you see here, there's a chat uh, surface and there you can ask your questions. Uh, today's session is uh, is actually the third part of a webinar series. If you go to our website www.arshanxp.com slash webinars, then you can see that we have a whole set of shows planned uh, already. So this is what we have today. And previously we had a show about a reception room design and the basics of CAD drawings. And also we have a couple of other shows coming up regarding kitchen design, documentation, lights and rendering. So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven shows all together are able to cover you the whole interior design workflow. And once you have completed these shows, you would be able to create very simple interior design spaces. If you want to follow along, I suggest that you download the webinar files that I'm using during this show and also download the course guide. The course guide is a comprehensive uh, PDF guide. I'm just showing you right now, which shows you all the tips and tricks of how to use the software. Let me just close this so I can uh, just turn the pages. So everything I have done so far is detailed in this course guide. I'm trying to follow it step by step so you can follow along once you have downloaded this and the other content as well. Okay, but today what we are going to discuss is going to be uh, bathroom design. Now, where we want to get to is, uh, is this, a rendered image of a bathroom uh, space. We are not going to render it, but you'll get the idea of why I'm showing you this. So. Just an understanding, uh, when it comes to bathroom design, the most important thing that we have to get clear is how to create tiling and tiling patterns because they are going to make your design much more accurate. Now, you might say that the same result can be done by using, using textures, but today I'm going to show you the benefit of using actual real world uh, 3D tile models. Now, without over explaining this, because I always believe in showing instead of, you know, um, talking about things, this is the bathroom in which we are going to work. So this is the final uh, stage of the of the bathroom. I'm using the page up and down keys to navigate around the space so you'd have an understanding. It's not a big bathroom, but it's quite a cleverly done one. So there are actually two wash basins, which, which I love. And also there's a, there's a sauna in the back. So I think this is a very good uh, little location. So that's what we are going to work on today. But we have to load up the starting position. And something I haven't, I have never showed you is how to open up a another project. Uh, let's assume that you are in one project and you want to open up another one. You do that by going into file, open project, and then you get to a folder where you, once you browse the, the, the file that you're looking for, you just click on the, the project that you want to load up. Uh, I don't want to save this project now. I'm just going to uh, discard it. I'm sure I want to quit. And another version of the project loads up. Okay, I'm going to use the uh, the software now in millimeters. That's just a quick disclaimer. If you want to use any other units, you can set it up under the cogwheel and go to units and angles and set it up there. Uh, but for now, I'm going to use it all in millimeters because that's what my course guide is telling me. Okay, um, once once we have uh, we have the file uh, set up, we have to get started with the tiling now. What I said in the beginning, tiling is done with actual 3D uh, bodies as opposed to textures. And that gives you a tremendous amount of edge because then you can get quantity takeoffs, but I'm not going to jump ahead with that one first. Let's investigate how to quickly, I don't know, tile one wall. Uh, let's just go to the, to the 3D, magnify it, and go to the perspective view list, which is up here. And if you click on bathroom number one, uh, that's the view that I'm, what we are going to spend most time on. So I'm just going to hit OK. So my task is actually to tile this part over here. So uh, how do we do that? We have, we have several ways to do it. The most important, the, the simplest way to do it is that we go to interior tiling, tiling in 3D um, like this and just click the wall and this dialog appears. I'm closing this now because I want to show you another way. It depends on which one is more uh, you know, convenient for you. So just click on the wall that you actually want to tile, right click and go tiling, tiling on wall side 
and all was. And if you do, this dialog comes up where you can define what kind of material, what kind of sizes and shapes and what kind of row shifts you want to work with. So what we have in mind is a is a certain type of tile so that we have to load up by clicking on the material tab over here and we have to browse for the for the content uh, that content is currently not in my model so I have to find it somewhere else I can find this search bar up here and I'm going to look for a material which is called uh, house of tones white and the size is 898 times uh, 328 now this comes with the installer, by the way, so you should be able to find that too. Okay, this is not really, a, it is a material, but it has a certain size, which as a benefit, I don't have to resize this. So, okay, I have the I have the tile now and I, I have its sizes. So that's so far so good. Uh, what is left to do? I have to define on the grout, which is the depth between the, you know, the, uh, the tiles. And also I'm not going to just, uh, just use it as, as a bunch of tiles, I want to create a, a row shift, which I can do by uh, by adding a row shift here. So I'm going to say that this is actually a 200 millimeters offset between the rows, and then I would have a very nice shifted view. Uh, let me just change the background area. Now the background area is going to be the part which is sort of behind my tiles. You are going to see that later on. It makes more sense when we proceed. And the material for that is going to be a bronze-ish material. Okay, here we go. And let's see if there's anything else to set up here. I think I'm, I'm done with this. So I'm just going to click that I want to tile the whole area. And this is the result. Uh, by the way, if, if this doesn't uh, update by itself, you have to click on the update button and then it gives you a preview of how the result should look like. One thing I don't like, I want to have vertical uh, rows. So I'm just going to click on orientation and I'm going to flip it left. Oh, that's that's the one that I'm looking for. So, okay, let's, let's hit okay. And what happens is that all of the walls are now tiled. Now you, you have seen that the software took its time to create these tiles. Uh, that is because these are actual 3D bodies. If I zoom in, maybe you can see the, the grout. So you see that these tiles have thicknesses. These tiles have mass and substance. And the reason for that is because, for one, it's going to look great on renders. And for the other point, uh, it's going to have actual um, amounts. So if you want to know how many whole and cut tiles you need, then, uh, then you would be able to create a sort of quantity takeoff of that. Okay, so we have one wall figured out and another thing we have to do, we have to tile the floor, which we are going to do a, similarly. So we are just going to click on the, the floor, which is actually a slab, right click, uh, tiling and tile full area. And now the software asks me, are you want, do you want to use the same tiles as you used before? The software remembers that. Uh, no, that's not what we want. We want to go back to material and use the same kind of uh, House of Tones uh, set, but another size. So I'm just going to say again, House of Tones. And what I'm looking for is a rectangular 598, 598 uh, piece. Yeah, that's the one. And um, I don't know, do we want a row shift? I don't think I do. So I'm just going to disable the row shift and orientation here, it doesn't really matter because these are rectangular pieces, but you could set it back if you want. Okay, so hit, hit okay. And now there's an extra, extra point here. The software tells me, okay, you want to cover this area only. So now you have the benefit of using one corner point with which you can place down and orient your uh, tiles. I'm not going to, uh, let's say I can, I can do that. I can just move here. And let's say that I want to start from this corner. So I click once and then I can decide on the orientation. I'm going to use it orthogonally like that. And again, the floor is tile. So that's that's the easy way to do it. I'm going to use um, something more elaborate because this is pretty bland. So I need to have some kind of other um, style, if you like, sort of tiling, which is one row a tile like this and another row of a different tile and another one and another one. So that's something what we have to set up because now we're using the same tiles on the walls and another type on the on the ground, but I need to have some kind of row distribution. So how do we do that? First of all, let's go to tiling and uh, say that I want to create um, a tiling style. I do that actually by the properties. So if I want to set something up before I start working it, always go with properties, properties and tiling. And now the software tells me that this is actually a tiling style. 
Um, do you want to use it or do you want to change this? Well, we want to change this because it's just, you know, a bunch of black tiles. I don't like it. So I'm just going to change it to something else. The, the tile style manager works a little bit similarly to creating a multi-layered element. Uh, you have to create the layers one by one, which I do like this. So first, uh, we have one layer over here and its total height is uh, up to 600 millimeters. See the software updates. And uh, the tile itself should be, and here I, I have to browse for another tile. The tile should be, I think it's House of Tones uh, 598. 598, I'm going to look for it again. So this actually amounts to two rows, I think. Yeah, so it, let me just hit, okay. So now I have one row actually of this. And here comes the next row. How do I add that? I click insert new. And if I do that, the, the former uh, row is going to be copied. So now I have another row, which is going to be, um, starts from the 600 uh, value and goes all the way up to, so, so its height is uh, 330. And the material for it should be another one, uh, another tile of the same family, but this time it's going to be another size. Uh, House of Tones, actually, not tiles. This is what happens if you are one step ahead. So House of Tones and the size is uh, eight, nine, three times, yeah, that's the one, okay? I need to rotate this, so I'm just going to um, rotate left. There you go. So if I hit okay, then I have another row like that. Okay, so far so good. I have, uh, I have these two rows already. But there should be sort of like a boundary of another very thin goldish, golden uh, line over there. So I do that by inserting new and again resizing it. It's going to be 23 millimeters thick altogether. You see that the software tries its best to make it full with cut tiles, but that's not what we want. We will go to the tile manager and we are going to browse for another tile, which is going to be a something which is called steel gold. Oh, sorry, steel goes with two E's, not two L's. Steel, gold, that's the one. Yeah, hit OK. Uh, orientation, I have to rotate it back because I want to make it horizontal. So original would be the one. Um, yeah, OK, this is good. If I zoom in, you, you see already this goldish line appearing. If you want to create a row shift, you can do, but now I like that the grouts are lining up. OK, um, the fourth line is going. Uh, in so I'm just going to hit okay and again if you if you see that the third line was duplicated but now I'm just going to change it to something else uh, height should be now this is going to be a high one uh, one six zero five zero and the material should be again one of these house of tones uh, items um, just a second house of tones yeah and the size is nine eight uh, 898 eight times uh, 328, that's the one, yeah. Perfect, so uh, this is, I think, good. Just hit okay. And are we finished? Well, not really, because there's an empty space over here and I have to cover that somehow. Well, what do we want to cover it with? Uh, definitely not with tiles. We want to add a background, a painted area. Why do we want to add that? That is because if I would accept this and place this down, then whatever I'm, I'm covering my walls with, it's going to affect this part as well. So I want to make sure that this part stays white no matter what happens. So how do we do that? We add another row, which adds another set of uh, tiles. But for now, I'm going to disable the visibility of these tile rows. So now it's gone. So all I have to do at the tile grout, I have to uh, recolor to something else, which I can do with uh, something whitish, so I'm just going to go and add white, bright white is fine. So again, I'm done with this. Okay, what do I do next? I have to save this style because I want to make sure that I can use it some other time as well. So I'm just going to hit this, which is the name of the original style that I was using. And I'm just going to say, I want to give a, a new style, which I have to name and there's a special name for this. So let me just look it up real quick. Uh, the name is two buds in and the folder. Now the folder, you can define these things uh, depending if you want to create subfolders, maybe a webinar folder or something. Um, not going to add in any subfolder, but here's a very important switch. Do you want this style to be available on this project only or for all the projects that you're making? 
and both options have the uh, benefits but now I'm going to go with uh, available on, on, on all projects and from now on if I go to the let's say I want to tile this wall with a new style that I have just created so first I have to click on the wall right click and say I want to delete all tiling from this wall let's make it gone okay here we go this is good and now I want to create a wall or the wall is already there. I want to tile my wall with the style that I just created. So I'm going with tiling and select and place a tiling style on all the walls. And now I have to, well, I could browse from the tile list here, but the software always loads up the last created one. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now the program is going to tile all my walls with the recently created tiles. Yeah, that's that's a very good tile style, by the way. You see that there's a different patterns and there's a golden barrier between the two uh, tile styles. And you see up here the painted area. So no matter what happens with this drawing from now on, the painted area is going to stay wide. But there's a few things we have still have to sort of figure out. By the way, um, if I hover my mouse over tiled areas, you see that the software highlights things with a bluish line set. If you don't want that setting, I like it because then I can see where my tiles are. But if you want to disable that, you can do that by going into uh, properties and cursor and marker. And here's there's a pre-selection button. If you disable this uh, check mark, I'm not going to do it. But if you do, then the uh, bluish selection um, rectangles are going to be gone. So this is where we are now. Next task, uh, we have to we have to tile uh, one of the floor pieces or what should we do first? I think we have to edit the tiles that we have on the on the floor uh, down here. Meanwhile, I'm just looking at the chat bar real quick to see if there are any questions. They are, so that's that's very good. Keep the questions coming. So from now on, what we want to create, we want to create a, a tile shift on the on the ground. So what do we do? We hit right click and we say edit tiles, which brings us back to the beginning of the tiles uh, tile editing surface. So what do we want? We want to add another reference line for the tile, so like an insertion point, which I can do like this. I want to want the tiles to be inserted based on this point. Uh, the orientation is going to be original, just to be sure, and we are adding a row shift of 200 millimeters. You don't have to type in the 200 uh, the millimeter signifier. You can do that without it. Hit update, and I I'm liking what I what I see, so I'm just going to hit OK. And now the software tells me, OK, you just uh, change the orientation. How do you want to place down the tiles? So I'm just going to use one of the existing tiles like that and direction like this and now the tiles are created. Um, are we done with this? Well not really because if we turn around which by the way I do with right click and moving my mouse if I turn around I see that there's a slab piece over here this kind of higher area which has not been tiled before. So uh, what do we do? We are just going to right click on the slab and we are going to go with uh, with tiling uh, tile full area and we are going to use the same thing and here's a trick uh, I have learned so if you want to make sure that the grouts are going to be running parallel here and here then use one of the existing tiles that you have created this would allow you to sort of how should I say uh, define how the tiles should run uh, I hope it makes sense. So what I was saying is that when you are deciding how the tiles should turn, you can define uh, the the, the um, orientation even when you are not hovering the mouse over this area. Let me just undo this real quick and, and show you it again. So highlight the area, right click, delete all, all tiling. And again, if I right click on this area, I say uh, tiling, tiling full area. Okay, now I can't do it there because then how would I know that they are going to line up? So I'm just going to use an existing tile up there and define on the orientation. No, no matter I do it here, it's going to be uh, created there. So I'm just going to hit OK. And now the grouts are running parallel to each other, which is actually one of the tips I always recommend when you are trying to make a realistic render. That's always good to sort of make things realistic. So next thing, um, we have to create... I don't know, something more interesting because this is getting pretty bland. So we have to have one wall, which is sort of breaking up this monotony of, of things. So let's start with this, uh, this shower over here. So uh, I'm not sure if there's any, any uh, perspectives with this shower, but let me just navigate back and forth. And that way I can find maybe one perspective uh, because according to my course description, there is, yes, that's the one. So if I 
if I want to retile this area, do I need to delete the tiles? Well, not really. You can just uh, simply right click and change the tiling style. And the software tells me, okay, this is the style. Do you want to change it? Yes, I want. And here's how I'm going to delete um, almost all of the lines and I'm going to uh, keep one. It doesn't matter how high, how high that is because I'm going to change it back to how high should it be? Uh, 2600. Okay, this is now a mess because there's only one line and there's that it doesn't look too good. But if I go to the tile uh, sort of mm, setup, I have a tiling pattern uh, switch over here. What does this do? Well, first of all, it has a set of predefined patterns. For example, if you are looking on floor coverings, this might come in handy. But what we are looking for is the mosaic tiling. Now, what does this do? What it actually does is that you can find up to four different tile um, colors with which the software is going to tile a certain area. I'm going to go with a mosaic tile with a hexagon with sizes which are predefined and I have to set up uh, four materials. And what these should be, um, let's start with this actually. I'm going to change this to something like a blue glass um, tile, blue glass, glass uh, Numbers number two, yeah. And then the remaining three are going to be uh, the, I don't know, what should that be? Let me just consult my chart. Uh, house of tones. It doesn't really matter which one I choose from the ones which doesn't have any, any coverings. Um, yeah, that's the one. And I'm just going to use the same one again. House of tones. Yeah, and the fourth one um, should be something something else. So I think this should be, but again, you can, you know, experiment with this one because this is where modeling comes into the picture when we do less mathematics and more art. So in integrally light, oh, that's not the name, light gray, light underscore gray, I think is the one or gray with a, yeah, which, which one should that be? Uh, let's use another one. A grayish color is what I need. So, um, yeah, I think I think this is light gray. This is good. That's the one that I was looking for originally. So, here's I can here I can set up the distribution of the tiles. So I can shift one in favor of the others. Uh, I'm just going to set this back to 25 because I want to create an, like an even distribution. I want to create all the elements. I don't want to disable them. So I'm just going to hit OK. And uh, I think before I do anything, I need to sort of save this into a tiling style. Now the software is thinking because what it does is that it starts to draw out hundreds or thousands of tiny tiles. So this might take longer, but the, way, the reason why it takes longer sometimes is that these are all individual three-dimensional elements. Imagine the number of surfaces. Well, the software doesn't care about the number of surfaces at this point because it can manage. But if you have a slower computer, then you might want to invest into a new um, processor or maybe a RAM. Okay, if I want to save this, I click on the uh, style name again. And here I need to save it under another name uh, before it, because if I say modify, it's going to override my original style. I don't want that, so I'm just going to hit OK. Oh, I'm in you. And it, the name is going to be two beds in a mosaic webinar folder. There you go. So now I have another one. And now the software is applying this style onto this surface. But here's a very clever trick I have learned while using this, uh, this tool. Once the software has created the tiling uh, style, it takes a while because it has, you know, many, many surfaces, uh, then you can just change how it looks. So if you don't like the current distribution, let's say I'm not fond of this particular distribution, then you just click on the style and apply it on the wall again. And then the software is going to redistribute the tiles. So you see, it's, it's keep on changing. If I click on it, it changes. So it always sort of adds in the latest uh, or another sortiment of tiles. This is always randomized. So this is always something that the software comes up with uh, on the fly. Now, uh, once we have created that, there's, uh, there's another way to sort of make your uh, visuals a bit more interesting. And I can do that if I zoom in. You see that if these tiles have certain uh, patterns, but they're always placed down with the same direction. Uh, let me show you another example, something with which I can show you 
what happens if you are using tiles with patterns? Uh, let me go to the um, to the object library and type in the name of one of the tiles I like to use. Uh, his name is Kalakata. Um, sorry, with one C. Here's the one. So if I grab onto this element and I dragging and uh, dropping onto the surface, the software asks me, okay, here's a quick reminder. Last time we looked at how to replace one material with another one, but if you create if you if you're adding a material, sometimes you are you are prompted with this. You can add a tile as a tile. So this is a shortcut. You just click on the element you want to tile, and then the software does it. Uh, okay, but here's one problem: all the tiles are oriented the same way. So this is om almost never the case. So whenever a professional is laying uh, tiles, he knows to rotate the tiles because if you are keep on putting them down the same way, the same direction then you are ending up with something bland like this one. So you have to sort of recreate reality by randomly rotating the tiles. And how is that done? It's, it's done like this. You have to uh, open up the tile's uh, properties, right click, edit tiles, and here's a switch for randomization. And if I hit OK, then I can find another sort of insertion point, which is going to be here. Define the rotation, and here we go. So now it's randomized. If you don't like it, uh, you can randomize it again and again, just like with the mosaic. So do it as many times as you want, because otherwise the result is going to be, I don't know, boring. So this way you can make it a bit more interesting. Here's another scenario. Let's assume that you have a mirror over here. But you know, this mirror is not going to be like the, your typical wall mounted one. This is going to be one of those mirrors which are actually built onto the wall. So what we want is that this area should not be tiled. Instead, it should be made with a mirror, which is sort of blending into the style, to the tile style. So that way the result would be much, I don't know, professional, uh, cleaner, neater if you like. So how do we do that? But first of all, we have to get familiar with another tool, which is called tiling on the layout, because here uh, it would be a bit cumbersome to find the right areas. So I'm just going to go with tiling and I'm going to say tiling on 2D and I'm going to choose the tiling on wall side button. And here the software asks me, okay, that's fine. Click on the wall that you want to edit. And I'm clicking on this wall over here. And now the program is going to lay down my layout like that. So let me just magnify it. What is this actually? This is a two dimensional representation of the tiles that I have on the 3D. So now I would be able to edit the tiles, removing them and moving them actually. So what do I need to do is that I want to create one area over here, which is completely clean. So how do I do that? I go with add rectangle. And now I'm just going to draw one rectangle over here from this corner all the way down here. And the software tells me, okay, now you have to define what kind of uh, material or background area you want to sort of fill this area with. I'm just going to say this should be a whitish part, bright white. And what happened now is that this area is filled out. So if I go to the 3D and look around you, I see that this area is now clean. So all I have to do, I have to create one uh, mirror over here. Now you might ask, why did I delete this first and then I add the mirror? It's because if you don't do that, then you might have duplicates. So instead of having one mirror and nothing under it, you might, you might end up with mirror and tiles under it, which might give you false information inaccuracies when you are um, making a tile consignation. So let's carry on with this. I click on the layout, right click and continue tiling. And the next thing I have to do, I have to add tiles. So I add the tile, highlight the area onto which I want to add a tile, which is going to be this one. And now the software tells me, uh, what is the size of the tile you want to add? Well, it's a bit tricky because I don't want to add many. I want to add one huge tile, which is going to be a mirror. So I do that by clicking on this tool. I'm going to define the tile by the number of columns and the number of rows, which is going to be one, one. So now I ended up with one single tile and the size is going to be, well, much larger than that, uh, 1,800 times um, 1,320. And then I have to change the material to mirror. Type in mirror, I'm oh, sorry, uh, extra E. And the material should be mirror uh, 03, okay? And if I hit, okay, then the software, uh, I think I'm, mine, mine is a bit small. So 
I'm just going to, yeah, this is a bit small. So let me just uh, do that again, because I think that wasn't the one I was looking for. So I'm going to add tile. I think I haven't uh, hit, yeah, I haven't hit update when I was updating the, the sizes, which is a rookie mistake if you ask me. So uh, 1,800 times 1,320, hit update. And I have one tile and I'm just going to hit OK. And here we go. So now I have a large tile with which I can cover this area. So I'm just going to line up the insertion points, hit OK, define the rotation, make sure it's not crooked because then the result will be horrible. So I'm just going to snap to the other point and there we go. So now we have one mirror to sort of represent the mirror over there. Now you might say that, well, Zoltan, this is not a mirror. I can't see myself in it. Well, in the 3D, you won't see yourself in it. It has to be rendered, but believe me, this area here has a rendering style if i if i click on this area uh, i can i could pull up the material properties and you see that this is a mirror so this should be uh like a reflective surface um on the long run so whenever you are rendering this you are going to see that later on so there's one other uh place i think over here which is a dresser so i need to have another mirror over there so i already have the layout so what do I do? I magnify this view because I like to work this way. So I'm just clicking on the layout, right click, continue tiling. And I'm just going to delete this part over here, which I can do by adding a, a rectangle again. And I'm just, I'm sorry, another rectangle. I want, yeah, that wasn't the one. There are two ways to add a rectangle and I'm just going to use the this one over here. So here we go. So I think this should be a wall-to-wall -wall one, but let me just consult my chart and that way I can make sure, yes, it's it's from wall-to-wall, -wall, so like this. Um, the material again will be white, bright white. And again, it's rinse and repeat. You can now uh, add another uh, tile, which I can do by clicking on add tiles, select the area and everything is good, uh, except for the size, the width should be 1,960. And the width is, the height is the same. So I think the height is the same. That's that's right, there you go. So just click, click, and it's gone. So now I have two um, mirrors, large mirrors, which are actually blending into the surface. So this is getting quite good, I think. So a much cleaner result than just putting a large image, uh, image or object of a mirror. Okay, one other thing I have to do because there's one inaccuracy in this drawing and that comes with this part over here. Let me highlight the, the 2D for a second and grab my little perspective finder and move it over there now, like like this. So the problem is, and again, I'm not resizing the, the windows, I'm decreasing the 2D, increasing the 3D just a bit so you can see things better. Problem is I have one sort of wall over here so that one but it's tiled behind it so this wall over here is tiled behind this element that's not good because if you are double tiling things then you are going to end up with a massive amount of not necessarily tiles and if you do then you know you might you might have to buy more and you want to be accurate even with the calculated loss you still have to be counting with this this is just a very sort of uh, small representation, but this gives you the idea in terms of how to delete the tiles a bit behind this column over here. Well, we have one layout here, which we do by clicking on the, uh, no, let's do it another way. Uh, clicking on the wall element, right click and say you want to create the layout of this. Let me just find which, uh, which tool is the best for that. Uh, maybe tiling on the layout. Oh no, I, for that I have to highlight it on the uh, 2D, just a second. Mm. If I say uh, tiling on the layout like that, yeah, here we go. So now I have the layout over here like that. So I'm just going to place it above this drawing. And uh, what I need to do is I have to find the... No, let me, let me circle back because this is not actually what the one that I want to delete tiles from. That's actually the wall behind it. So. That's the reason I couldn't do it. So right click and say um, tiling on uh, on wall side. There you go. So put it like this, and then it would line up. So if you if, if you position the the door like or the or the the, um, the wall like this, then it should appear. Okay, something I have to figure out here because uh, the 
software is not delivering what I was looking, uh, I was hoping for. So let me just do it some other way. Uh, tiling on the layout. And here we go. So again, circle back. The, the best way to do it, and I'm just going to delete it, is to click on the wall that you want to tile on the layout, right click, say tiling on the layout and put it down like this. So now what I want to do, I want to make sure that whatever is behind this part, it's going to be gone. So the best way to do it, for now, I'm just going to say finish. Uh, the best way to do it is to go to drafting and draw two sets of helping lines like this. Here's going to be one and here's another one. Okay, so I know for a fact that uh, these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, well, seven tiles should be gone. The other ones will be cut anyway, so I don't, I don't mind them. But these seven tiles, well, that does a lot of damage to your, to your uh, budget. So let me just highlight the layout again. Right click, continue tiling, and click on delete, and delete the tiles that you don't need. Here's another one. Don't forget about this thing over here. And I think it's good. So let me just hit enter. And now the tiles are gone. So seemingly nothing changed in the 3D. But a huge difference is made right now because now these seven tiles are not going to be included in my quantity takeoff. So that's what we wanted. If you want to close this, you just hit finish. Um, let's keep on talking about the layouts. The layouts are actually quite a handy tool for visualization because that way you can show uh, how, the, how the tiling well, layout should look like. So the way it's supposed to do, do so the way it's supposed to go is that you that you click on the element that you want to show like this. So click on the wall, right click, and say tiling uh, tiling on a wall side like that, and that would create uh, well, it's the other side of the door. Sorry about that. So you have to sort of detail the layouts like this. So click on that, right click, and go with. Uh, um, just a sec. Ah, yeah, this is something I can do in the in the 3D, not in the 2D. So let's say I want to uh, create a style of this. So right click, um, and uh, let's go with tiling on the layout. And then you just place down the layouts as you are creating them. So that's one one of the layouts. If you want to create another one, or or you create get another one with the slab, you just create click on the slab. Now I can't click on the slab right now because I have a wall above it. But you already know that the, with this jump list, you can quickly find the slab. There are actually two sub pieces. I need. I think I need this one. So if I right click and I go with the tiling and the tiling on floor tool, then, you know, these things are automatically uh, created. You can push this back to the original drawing, but that's the way to sort of get visual representation of how your tiles look like. So now again, I could be going in and creating multiple uh, multi-layered uh, styles over here, but that's the general idea. But that's still not what we want to use for documentation later on. Because we have a better way to do it, and that is called a uh, wall view. If you go to documentation and you find a wall elevation tool over here, then you create. You can create a wall elevation. Now, what is a wall elevation? Uh, let me just show you. It, it does work a little bit similarly to an architectural section, but only for one wall. You have two choices. Do you want to create an image representation of the wall or a drawing representation? We are going to go with image and click on the wall that you want to get a, um, a wall view off. So just click on the wall. And now the software tells you, okay, which direction you want to look at it from. I don't know if you see this orange arrow, but you make sure it's pointing from where you are to what you want to see like that. And then uh, define the depth of the or the width of what you want to see and the depth. So depth is always good to trim it back a bit because otherwise, for example, this, this uh, um, I don't want the second plan to be in there. I just want to have the first one. Or if you if you are inserting a node, then even the second one could be ignored like that. So I don't want to have this very nice plan over here. So just hit enter. And the software tells you, okay, do you want to save this into an image? Mm, PNG is, is a good way to go. And the size, 1080, I think that's good. And I want to place it onto the drawing like that. So you could be saving this as an external image. So. In fact, let me do that right now. So let me just uh, quickly browse to the folder where I have the webinar content. And then I can just save it and attach to my uh, my documentation later on. So that's going to be like that. So I already saved it. And again, if you want to now get it into the design, then what you do is that you go to the 
to the image that you have created like that and just drag and drop it in okay this is not going to be in scale so the better way to do it is to actually create a um, ball elevation like that image viewing direction again I have no problems with these plans I just don't want to show them on the floor plan right now so I'm in the wall elevation now so let me just hit okay and the drawing is uh, placed now one very important thing about this drawing is that it's going to be a vector uh, not a vector base it's an image so if you zoom in you see that it's going to be blurry however if you want to draw additional things on it, you see that the software is going to snap to the points. So this is sort of like an in-between uh, between, um, a drawing and, and an image. Because if you, for example, want to make a quick dimension, let me just do that real quick, uh, like that. Mm, maybe like a length dimension like this. Let's say, let's say the total height of the tiling style then it's there. So you can you can measure th on, onto this thing. So you can uh, do dimensions, you can do additional drawings onto this. But the point is that these, these drawings are going to be uh, representing your, your floor plan like that. So if you want to create uh, a representation of what you have created, wall elevations, which are a must for an interior design project, then this is how you can do that. When I was beginning this presentation, I was promising you that one of the most important things of using real world uh, 3D objects as opposed to, to to materials for tiling is that you can create quantity takeoffs of it so that's what we are doing now um, by the way if you have selected anything just hit escape or click next to it and it's going to be deselected that's just a quick uh, tip for you so if you go to documentation and click on a quantity takeoff then you are able to get access to a wide variety of takeoff opportunities I'm going to use Excel and here now I'm going to go with a tiling um, op option and I can choose what I want to get the tiling schedule off. Uh, I don't have roofs, but I don't have to disable them. If you don't have these elements, then it's just going to be ignored. So I'm hitting OK. Software asks me, where do I want to save this tiling uh, consignation? I'm just going to save it into the webinar folder, overwriting the existing ones. And the software is going to be thinking for a second. And then I have a whole list of elements. Let me just highlight by the way if you don't know how to do it hit control and make the shift or scroll inwards and then it's going to be highlighted i think you can see it better first off right off the bat you have a list of items you have used the the materials the name uh, producer if you have any the sizes and the total number of pieces and the areas they are covering for all the single elements that I have using, I haven't, I haven't used many tiles, but all the ones are now highlighted here. So that sort of gives you an idea of how many you have all together uh, and how many, how many full parts or full parts and fragments you have. And this is where it's important, where it becomes important to sort of uh, cut the elements from, from here, which you don't need because otherwise it's going to be included. So make sure you have the accurate data. Page two is going to have a, a room list, which I don't have right now. And if you have any background areas, coverings, then this is where it's going to be detailed. And here are the tiles listed. You know, all the tiling properties are going to be here. So if you want to be accurate with your design, then this is how you do it. So I'm, like I said in the beginning, I'm not doing any renderings now because they are going to be a bit more time consuming. But the idea is that this is what you end up with uh, once you have created the, the whole tiling layout you see that you have a very nice mosaic tiling and light reflections and everything are much better if you are not using textures but you're using actual real world tiles now we have a couple of questions over here so let's see them uh, let me just circle back to the beginning uh, that was one uh, one question about the um, the 3d warehouse uh, to which we are connecting now you should know that the 3d warehouse is made and maintained by uh, Trimble, which is a multinational company rooted in the US. Now, it's their uh, proprietary platform. So whenever they are making a development or, or when, this, when our software doesn't connect to them, that's because they made some kind of changes in their protocol, but we are always very quick to amend that. So with another patch, another, another version of Arch9, you will be able to access the 3D Warehouse um, directly. If you don't access it, you can manually download the files from 3d warehouse as an offline copy and then you can just drag them and drop them onto the project that you're working with um okay another question uh, how can i create tiling in just a part of the floor surface for example in the kitchen now um 
is actually done with the same tool as I used before. So if I, um, let me just delete this and do it like that. So if you if you have an element, you just, um, I want to uh, highlight the slab like this. So uh, if I'm going with uh, tiling on floor like that, then the whole area is tiled, but if you want to edit the tile layout, then you can offset it back. So if you if you want to say that only up until to this part, I want to have the tiles, then you can just offset it back. And then you can have sort of like um, an area which is tiled, another area which is not. So you can add, add an additional set of tiles over here. So if you have, for example, a, uh, a kitchen and, uh, and, and, and a diner, which has a split area, uh, certain parts are tiled and other parts are not, then you can do it like this. In fact, let me show you another trick. So let's say that this part is tiled and I'm going to highlight the, the slab and I'm changing the, the material for the slab, which is going to be, it's not going to be beautiful, but it gets you the idea. So I'm going to go with uh, concrete number three, hit okay. Then you see that there's a part of the slab where the original content is showing through and there's a part which is already uh, tiled. So this way you can make like a split room for a split row for a room. So that that's the that's the answer to that question. Another question, is it possible to reproduce the tile of a catalog by scanning and recreate it in Arch9? Um, yes, well, it can be done, but the images have to be very, very good. So when whenever you are creating a, a tile, um, let me just open up the tile style again and um, show you how that's done. So whenever you are here and uh, creating a rectangle based tile, uh, let me just crank it up to 500 just to show you. So here you can add any kind of image and here you can add any kind of size. However, if the image that you are working with the photo is, if it's manufacturer made, then it's not a problem. So you can just load up the image, make sure you have the right sizes and you are good to go. But if, if you made the picture, then you know, the uh, repetition of the tiles might be a bit less realistic because of the lighting. I'm not saying that you cannot take good pictures, don't get me wrong, it's just, it has to be very goodly lit. So it's the best way is to get something from the manufacturer's own website or uh, alternatively, you can consult the, uh, let me just open up that up, uh, our own showroom because in our showroom, we have a set of uh, items you can work with. So if you go to the showroom, then here you can find uh, tiles, with, uh, let me just find it, with the actual like manufacturer pictures. That, that's what I meant. So as long as you have nice images and you have the actual sizes, you can do that. Uh, another question, can you cut the tiles on the guidelines that you have drawn? Uh, well, the same, but um, well, the answer to that, uh, thanks for my colleagues who have just posted this answer. The tiles are automatically cut along the edges of a respective background area. Uh, here's a question, uh, another one. Are the tile objects automatically providing reflection effects for renderings and can you adjust such reflections to suit? How does it impact on render time and would it go to Archine Live? Well, the answer is yes to all of them except for the one which, uh, which is uh, starting with how. So whenever you have a tile like this one and you right click on it and you say find material and here's the material I was using it. I was using for it. So here you see that there are render styles attached to it. So you can change the style to anything. You can uh, crank up the visibility, oh, I mean the transparency even, if you have like a glass-like surface, brightness reflection. So for every single surface, uh, let me just uh, maybe find this one. For every single surface, you can refine these, uh, these things. Now, rendering time is influenced when you are working with areas like um, like the mosaic one. Let me just find it real quick. So if you have a mosaic tiling that comes with many, many surfaces, so that uh, that would mean a little bit longer uh, rendering time because this surface has, you know, this area has many surfaces, but it doesn't do that much damage. So it might obviously take longer than using uh, an image, but since you have, imagine that you set up four different mosaic types with four different rendering styles, imagine the result, how how beautiful it should look like. It's, it's just perfect. So let me just, again, just looking at the the slides that I have over here, imagine so how good they would look like. Yeah, it's neat. I love modeling. So uh, another question. Uh, yes, and rendering styles and all the properties that you have set up here would be exported into Arch and XP Live, of course. A 
question, how to customize and create a library of material textures for manufacturers? Um, this is something that you can do yourself if you go to material and you find the tile folder. And here, if you have saved something to this library, then you can add sub uh, subcategories, um, just like when I was doing it with the, with the tiling styles like this. You can have additional folders with the manufacturer names and you can have uh, tile styles under the folders uh, showing the actual manufacturer's names. Well, I really hope that I answered all the questions. They are very good and I would like to thank you for your attention in this one because it's uh, all these questions mean that the topic is uh, is all spot, uh, spot on, so you are interested in what I have to say, which is always good to know, uh, that I'm just not talking to myself, but I have actual audience, which is listening to what we have to say about Archine uh, and its interior design capabilities. That being said, the next topic that we are going to discover, and that is going to be tomorrow, is uh, kitchen design. Now, what exactly do we mean by kitchen design? I mostly mean uh, cabinetry how to create something that they call carcass furniture. Uh, furniture pieces which are made by panels. How to create a, a kitchen corner with worktops, wash basins, kitchen appliances, and how to make sense of these things. Because similarly to what we did now with the tiling, that you actually use real world items, which you are collecting into a consignment, quantity takeoff, we are doing the same thing with the kitchen. So not only we are creating a cabinet, but we are also going to make uh, quantity takeoffs of it. So that's going to be very exciting because now we are just going to have like a, like a cabinet list and all kinds of exciting stuff. So make sure you tune in next time, which is tomorrow for Kitchen Design. If you missed the shows, you can rewatch them. Um, just a quick reminder, if you go to our website, you can find all the shows there. So if you go back to the website, you can see today's shows and the upcoming shows and the last ones. So make sure you follow the series, uh, download the course, con uh, course content and follow along because that way you can learn much more than you could be doing by yourself. By the way, we are doing these shows for free uh, and it's going to be kept that way. So if you want to repay my time, then you might might as well subscribe to our channel and like the video if you have if you actually liked it. I'm not asking you to like it if, if you didn't like it, but if you, if you stayed around, then that means that you like what you saw. So see you tomorrow and until then, uh, happy designing, happy modeling, and tomorrow we carry on with kitchen design. Thank you for your attention.